State Charity Committee. I'm pleased to welcome you to this remote meeting of the committee. The meeting will be broadcast live and recorded for playback on the Council's YouTube channel. And this will include the instant messaging. Will anyone else be recording the proceedings? I'm asking so that people at the meeting will know whether or not this is happening. No messages, can't see any messages. Um, I will now explain how we intend to proceed this afternoon. My role as vice chairman will continue However, the responsibility for managing the meeting has been temporarily assigned to the Democratic and Electoral Reg Services Manager, who I will refer to as the facilitator. This officer will not steer the debate. He will merely assist in implementing the remote me meeting protocols. A Democratic Services Officer is with us to produce the minutes and to provide procedural advice as required. I'll provide further explanations as we proceed through the agenda, but members are reminded that instant messaging, messaging will be visible to those viewing the meeting and must only be used by members to indicate their wish to speak. And I'll just remind members that today is the 11th of June 2020, timed at just gone two o'clock, five past. I'll now ask the facilitator to take the attendance register by reading out the list of committee members in alphabetical order. Members should confirm their attendance by answering present. OK, th thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Cox. Ooh. Present. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Daly. Present. Councillor Mrs Gooch. Present. And Councillor McLaughlin, as we know, isn't on the call. So that is all. Thank you, Chair. That's all. Thank you very much. I'll now ask the facilitator to read out the list of officers present uh, and which items they're presenting. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we have John Foster, Head of Regeneration and Economic Development. Mike Evans, Leisure Manager, who will be presenting on item 12. Paul Holland, Senior Finance Manager. Nigel Holman, Cobtree Park Manager. Lucinda McKenzie Ingle, uh, team, lead, team leader for contracts and commissioning. Mirabel Insafor, uh, senior lawyer, contracts and commissioning. Myself, Ryan O'Connell, as a facilitator, and Debbie Snook as the uh, clerk. Uh, we also have Julie May as ICT support. Thank you. Thank you. I'll now ask the facilitator to read out the list of apologies received, if we have any. Uh, we haven't received any apologies, but obviously we had Councillor McLaughlin on the call who then dropped off. So um, right. the committee should bear that in mind. Thank you. That's right. Thank you very much. And we're not aware of any substitute members as we're all here, apart from Councillor McLaughlin, of course. Um, are there any urgent items? I'm not aware of any. No. OK, item four, visiting members. I'll now ask the facilitator to read out the names of any visiting members, uh, along with the agenda items they've indicated that they wish to speak on. Uh, we have been notified of Councillor Perry with a wish to speak on item 12. Thank you. Thank you. As visiting members are required to provide, pro oh, I needn't read out that bit, need I? Disclosure by members and officers. Are there, are there any disclosures at all? I, as I'm not aware, there are no messaging. I'll assume that there are no disclosures. Item six, disclosures of lobbying. The facilitator, I think it's down to the facilitator to ask, is it, whether or not? Correct. So, Councillor Cox? None. Councillor Daly? None. And Councillor Mrs Gooch? None. Thank you. That's it. I've said about uh, uh, items being taken in private, but as there are no part two papers, I intend to take them all, all the items in public. Is that agreed, everybody? I'm happy to see if there are no any objections. Just let me know. Agreed. No, no. Agreed. Thank you very much indeed. Agreed. Let's now look at. Thank you. I, and I think I agree too. Item eight. 
the minutes of the meeting held on the 18th of March. I hope you've had a good look, members. Um, if you want me to go through them page by page, I will. But are you happy for us to agree them as a correct record of that meeting? I'm happy to propose they're uh, correct. Agreed. That's seconded by me. And Dan uh, agreed. And Dan agreed. OK. Uh, petitions. Are there any petitions? I'm not aware of any. There are none. No, jolly good. Question and answer session is item 10. I don't think we have any questions and answers from the public, do we? No, we certainly there are none. Excellent. Item 11. Uh, questions from members to the chairman or the vice chairman in this case. We have no questions. Councillor McLaughlin looks like he's back, potentially. Ooh. Is that. Yeah, so Sorry about that. That went well, didn't it? <laughs> well timed, Councillor McLaughlin. <laughs> okay. Okay. Carry We're on. bang on item 12. We're bang on item 12. So this would be a very suitable uh, point in the meeting for you to take over as chairman. And I'll just remind you that uh, Councillor Perry wishes to speak on this item as well. Should Councillor McLaughlin be asked whether he's been lobbied? Uh oh. Thank well, you. I'd just very like much. to confirm that he's able to take the chair first. Uh, sorry about that. I, I seem to have got myself reconnected. Um, my apologies for that. And thank you, uh, Faye, for stepping in. Uh, You're no, I haven't, I haven't been lobbied. Um, if that was the Do you have any disclosures, Councillor McLaughlin? I beg your pardon? Do you have any disclosures? Um, no. Excellent. Thank you. So, do you want me to continue? Yes, I, please. So, we're on yes. item 11, are we? We've just done item uh, 11, and we're now on item 12, which I think is appropriate for you to come in at this point, Councillor McLaughlin, as chair. And Councillor Perry will also wish to speak, I understand, on this item. Um, OK, um, where are we? I'll read out the agenda item and then refer to the officer who will be presenting the, the report. Um, that's uh, Mike, I guess. Uh, I've missed the minutes reading, have I, presumably? Yes. Yes. Did you have anything you wanted to say? Because we've just approved not now. I'll, not now. I'll save it. Thanks. OK. In the interest of moving on. Um, so, item 12, Cobtree Contracts, Reliefs and Mitigations. This is the main item of the, um, of the agenda, I think, today. So, uh, may, um, may I ask the visiting member, Mr. Councillor Perry? Chairman, it's Debbie here, the committee clerk. Uh, um, I think we need to ask Mike to introduce this report yes, first. Yes, yeah. Okay. Like to speak on this at the moment. Are you there, Mr. Perry? Sorry, I was confused. I thought the uh, officer was going to present the um, paper first, and then normally his visiting member. Councillor Perry, can you hear me? Something. Can you hear me? Oh no, we I, can, I can hear you, Councillor Perry. Oh, no. Sorry, uh, we had a problem this morning. That's why. Yeah. Oh, God. No, I, I, I was hoping. Like I thought the. Uh, okay. Go ahead then, Mike. Well, that's the normal way, isn't it? The papers presented. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I can I can speak first. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thanks everyone for their time this afternoon, uh, in particular support colleagues who've made the meeting possible. So, uh, it's the chairman here. Who is going to present the report? Can we hear the report? Yeah, I can do that, Chair. It, uh, Mike Evans is the report author. I can introduce the report now. Okay, thanks. Go ahead. Yeah, so thank you to, to colleagues for, for the meeting. Um, and after a consultation with the chair, um, 
updated recommendations to the group, um, and thanks to Debbie again for circulating those earlier today. I trust everyone's had time to read them. Um, I'll come to those later. Uh, now, uh, I'll highlight some information within the report. So the, the background to this is the COVID-19 lockdown, um, which started the um, 16th of March uh, 2020, and indeed impacted our last meeting on the 18th of March in the town. And since then, the sites at the estate have been closed down over the course of that following week. Um, operators then moved into lockdown mode, um, looked after the buildings and, and the animals on site at Kent Life. And once the operational arrangements were taken care of, discussions moved into the contract element. Um, at the same time as that, government also provided uh, contracting authorities uh, with the UK PPN guidance, which is referred to in the report. Uh, and that gives instructions on how councils and similar public bodies and contract contracting authorities should act to protect businesses, supply chains, and the continued of em employment of individuals within local areas. Um, and this has been used by many uh, MBC departments in the management of its contracts so that services to residents can continue uh, and the local economy, businesses and employment are all protected. So the report goes through the particulars of each venue in line with this government guidance and in line with the contracts we have in place at Coptree. So the golf course section um, explains that the golf course was closed for 58 days. Um, my time active, the operator of the have qualified for a £10,000 business rates grant. Uh, they are now partially reopened. Um, oh, sorry, they partially reopened on the 20th of May to two ball golfers, and they're now operating uh, full capacity now that government restrictions allow people in groups of up to six to, to meet and socialise in open spaces. The majority of their staff uh, remain furloughed, but adequate, st adequate staff have been released from furlough to supervise the venue and people on site and the golf course recommendation is uh, recommendation one which I'll come to in a moment. Um, at Kent Life that venue closed on the 22nd of March. Um, they're currently planning for a 4th of July reopening um, in line with an expecting an announcement from government this week. Um, until we have that announcement we don't know when they will reopen or not so they, they currently remain closed. Um, it's important for committees to note that the rent from last year remains unpaid um, and hence the updated recommendation uh, in the report, which is uh, the updated recommendation two. Um, the Cobbshire Cafe operator has chosen not to follow the UK PPN guidance um, and does not want to share any financial information with officers or with the uh, committee. Um, the negotiations and discussions with the management uh, of the cafe operator has been less than ideal. Um, and it I think it wouldn't be right uh, to share all those um, conversations and facts with the trust, um, in particular, um, well, sorry, with particular um, it's just important for the trust to know that they don't want to share uh, information um, of a financial nature or um, want to clarify any points with us. Um, and we also require further clarification on their staffing structures at this time. Um, so at this time, without that information, officers are not confident in applying the UK PPN guidance. Um, when the operator chooses to meet the criteria and provide a clarification, officers can make rent relief uh, recommendations and solutions to them. So this is picked up in the new recommendation three, which was shared with you this morning. Um, at all times, the recommendations are um, looking at the, the best and the worst case scenarios, and these have been mapped by myself and the senior finance manager and are available in the Cobbtree cash Cashflow document. Um, the recommendations in this report are within financial levels for the estate committee. Um, and we're mindful at all times that um, the Manor Estate Committee has its own cash flow to protect and its own um, uh, its own duties against the Charity Commission um, and needs to be prepared uh, to sustain its own cash flow and also be prepared to provide further assistance to operators in the future should the COVID-19 pandemic carry on for the rest of the year or indeed into 2021. So I can share those updated recommendations now, Chair, or you could um, take the conversation and allow members to comment. Up to you. That's the background information shared. Councillor McLaughlin. Can you hear me, Chair?
Councillor McLaughlin. Can you hear us? Oh, I think. Okay. I, I was going to suggest that we, we basically pause the meeting for a, a few minutes while we try to make sure we get a, a proper connection with the chairman. in favour of what, what you said. Uh, I just had a couple of questions, really. The, the, it was only, they're, only they're, they're not really germane to the final recommendation, but the 58 days, what period does it actually cover for the golf? Um, and the other one is the um, Kent Live. You're saying, do we actually know when they're going to reopen? Because obviously we've had the information from government now that um, zoos will be allowed to reopen. Um, and I was wondering what the position on Kent life is, particularly with social distancing. I thought it would be a possibility for them to open. But there were my two, my, I think, principal questions. I agree with the points about the, the Cobb Tree Cafe, and I agree broadly with the paragraphs in the paper from 3.3 .3 to 3.9, which I think um, sets out the position very clearly. Um, so I, I'm in favour of the recommendations, but I just had those couple of questions, really. Thank you. Okay, John, thanks very much. Mike, can you answer those questions? You did. Uh, yes, Chair. Um, the 58 days um, calculation for the Cobtree Golf Course is from the day they closed, um, I believe it was the 22nd of March uh, 2020, and the reopening on the 20th of May. Um, um, in preparing the report, I did think about um, taking a, a whole month approach or a whole quarter approach. Obviously, the, the impact of COVID is going to be um, felt for a sustained period. Um, in putting the recommendations together, I wanted to recognise that some businesses are going to be closed for longer than others, and it was important that we didn't uh, give everyone a, a blanket um, level of support that would uh, would lead to one operator saying, "Hang on, we've been closed for longer than them," etc. Albeit they are case different cases, um, so that's the reason for the 58-day <coughs> closure. <coughs> Excuse me, um, and then again, we can also apply that to the other sites. So when Kent Life. Um, and the cafe do reopen, their closure period will then be the, the figure of, of days that goes into their similar calculation. Um, on the Kent Life reopening, um, at the time of writing the report, we didn't have the information on zoos. Um, we now have that, um, and Kent Life and Planning Solutions are building that into their planning for reopening, um, along with the, the social distancing measures that all sites are now taking. Um, so the decision for Kent Life is going to be whether, as a business, they are enough of a zoo that would justify reopening and 
staff of the furlough scheme to give them enough um, enough revenue um, versus staying closed for another few weeks until the 4th of July, which is the anticipated date for leisure centres and uh, leisure operators to reopen, um, because that would also include their play area um, and their other outdoor activities, which would enable the business to, to go from being closed to a lot more open as opposed to being temporarily open in a in a zoo function only um, with social distancing that wouldn't allow them to generate enough income in those couple of weeks and justify reopening. So I hope that's shed a, a bit more light on that situation. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, that, that's very clear. Uh, and thanks very much. Yeah, that answers the point. So I was going to yeah, say, yeah. One of the uh, points to clarify is I, I don't know if Kent Life with its um, farmyard and cuddle corner is a licensed zoo or not. And there might be a, uh, a governmental yeah. distinction between yeah. uh, being a full zoo uh, and having a, a selection of farmyard animals. And I, th I think they're looking at that as well. OK. Now, that's an interesting point. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Thanks very much for that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, um, I've asked if anybody wishes to speak. Uh, I see I've got a positive from Councillor Cox. Before I, before I go to that, um, I just want to say that um, it's my intention at the end of the discussion to go for the, um, uh, the recommendations to take all the recommendations together uh, and uh, so we'll agree them or disagree them as a is that okay with everyone just just say yes yes I'm, that makes sense yes well I, Mr. Do Councillor McLaughlin, was, to me, was speaking in Morse code at that time, actually. But I, I think I got the gist, and I think I can agree thank, with thank what you Thank you, Faye. Was that Mark? That was Dan. I'm waiting to ask a question. I think, everyone, that what is happening is there's an amount of lag yeah. between Councillor McLaughlin's connection and the meeting. Which means the things are are coming through. So my connect, I'm, I'm hearing in staccato mode, and I must be being, I must be being. Done. So, um, Martin, if, if, I, I think Martin's trying to say something, but I'm not getting it. I will carry on. Um, now you're letting so me. Martin, in. Um, would you like to come in? Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> it, it does give me quite an element of concern to hear that one of our tenants. Uh, whose whose contribution to our coffers is made based upon the amount of turnover and the way that they con that conduct their business, yet they don't seem to wish to actually converse with us in a similar method that everybody else has. Um, I would also, have I read or misread that they don't really wish to carry on being at Cobtree Park? Can Mike clarify that, and then I'll come. I'll continue. So, have they said they wish to pull out? Because I think that's why they were trying to enforce the force majeure. Mike. Um, so yes, they they sent a force majeure letter. Um, I forget the exact. Okay, Mike, date. can you come in on that? Um, yes, we'll do, Chair. Um, yes, yeah, so DHET sent a force majeure letter. Um, I forget the exact date, but two or three weeks ago. Um, uh, and following the guidance, we have um, have not accepted their claim for force majeure. Um, it also didn't meet a lot of the, the terms of the contract in terms of how they need to lay their letter out. Um, um, previously to that, they owed the Borough Council and CMET um, quite a large amount of money left over from when they took the contracts on. Um, and they were... Uh, had previously said um, verbally that they lo uh, would rather leave the contracts than pay that money back, um, and they have threatened to leave uh, on one other occasion. Um, that money all now uh, has been paid, um, so they have a, have a zero balance on their account with us, um, and for the time being, they are our cafe operator um, under contract. Okay. 
Okay, so as far as I'm aware then, they have maintained and paid everything up to date and they no longer wish to vacate. Um, am I correct in, and I know this is but just to, to conclude, are they still or have they now pulled out of uh, Moat Park? It's just a, 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 another fact. Um, so they didn't pull out of Moat Park, but their lease was for a two year period which has come to an end and okay. they were in place for the whole of that period. That ended uh, on the 18th of April 2020, just as okay. the lockdown measures came in. All right. Thank you very much for bringing me up to date on those. That has given me a bit more satisfaction knowing that they are playing the game, as it were, and towing the line, and uh, we should treat them, therefore, as, much, on me again, as, as all of the others. Um, it's you that's freezing on us don't worry we'll carry on um so i, I think i'm content uh, and and your 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 report was full uh, and therefore i'm happy to look at the recommendations that have now been circulated and i'll leave it there and see if anybody else wants to speak members can i just come in at this point um we obviously as a committee meeting do need to have a chairman we need to have a chairman who's who's running the meeting so i've asked julie if she can contact councillor mclaughlin on his mobile and find out whether or not it'd be, he would be okay with shifting the chairmanship over to Councillor Gooch in order to facilitate the conversation properly. Okay, so you wanted to come in. Yes, I did actually, <laughs> Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you very much. Ryan, yeah, are you all right if I continue? Yes, carry on. But we'll right, do that in the okay. background. Okay. Uh, thank you for this very clear report and thank you very much for the updates, Mike. That's really helpful. May I just yeah, ask... Can anybody, can anybody hear me? Yes, thank you, Steve. Yes, we can hear you. You can hear me? Yes. yes. Well, I can hear you perfectly as well, so I'm not quite sure what's going on here. If I've been deposed, fine. <laughs> it's <laughs> no, just there's not. a lag. There's a lag, Steve. It's the time lag that's the problem. Okay, on page Is 20, okay. yes, uh, paragraph 7.1 on page 20, uh, the next steps would be uh, for legal services to vary the service contract. Uh, is this subject to uh, a time scale? And if it is subject to a required time scale, how much do we have to rely on it? Mike, I think that's a question for you, please. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Mrs. Gooch. Um, so the time scales, um, uh, I'm not sure of a, of a legal time scale, and um, I know Lucinda's in the meeting, and she may want to give us some thoughts on this as well. And her thoughts would obviously be a lot more qualified than mine. Um, ah. In terms of protecting the operators, um, no operator has indicated to us yet that it, they have major cash flow issues um, and are on the, the brink of uh, into insolvency. So we don't have those immediate time pressures. But oh, that's good. But um, with respect, great respect to the legal services, um, the uh, track record for sticking to, uh, well, there haven't been any time scales. And I'm thinking about the contract we had with the young farmers. We were sort of on tenterhooks waiting for that to be dealt with. So I'm wondering if there is, if we can actually request a time scale with, within which the deed of variation is carried out. Because if we don't, assuming we agree to it, obviously, but if we don't require a time scale, we could be here next January and the deed still hasn't been sorted out with respect. Well, if if um, members want to put a time scale on it, um, we can we can apply one to the recommendations that allows enough time for um, the conversations to be had uh, with the operators and for the paperwork to be drafted and sent across to their legal representatives. Oh, that's good. Perhaps we could ask Lucinda what would be a sensible or sorry, a realistic practical time scale so that we can build that into the recommendation. Uh, the time scale from my point of view is I can deal with it almost immediately. What generally takes time is receiving all the correct information, which I think was the case with um, the uh, previous matter that you referred to. So obviously we are reliant on receiving all the information from other parties. 
That was a good answer. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was really a good answer. Get out of that one. What advantage, <laughs> Lucinda, fate to serve. <laughs> uh, right. In that case, if if I make a recommendation, Mike, Mike, I'm sure that you would make sure that all the relevant information is available. I mean, the, the report's been so clear. There's no reason to assume that the information's not readily available and hand it over to legal. Yes, uh, yes, and, said. yes with, with these matters, we had to do all the, the background work uh, obtaining profit and loss account sheets from the operators and uh, getting them, their transparent information from them to look at what recommendations we were going to put forward so we have all that information from them already. Uh, lovely. Call me an anorak, but I'd like to see a date uh, in the recommendation, what, within within the month, by the end of the month? That's no problem from my point of view, as long as I have all the necessary information. So I can certainly um, say that I can, uh, um, that I'm fine with that time scale, but I can't obviously speak on behalf of other parties who may need to provide information. Ah, so we'll build that in. Subject to all the necessary uh, information being received, uh, the deed of uh, variation can be carried out by the end of what? July? Is that reasonable? Oh, I thought right. you said the end of this month. I was being generous because you were making <laughs> me feel quite guilty. <laughs> that yeah. I... <laughs> you say 30 My days then. Yes. Suggestion. If I could add that um, a number of the operators still have a lot of staff on furlough, um, so we don't have immediate access to necessarily all the employees who might want to have an input into uh, kind of dotting the I's and crossing the T's from the operator's end. Um, and they also have a number of other sites that they're having similar conversations with. So My Time Active, for example, run um, uh, 16 golf courses in the UK and a number of leisure centres for other authorities. So their legal department is as busy as ours at the moment, um, as busy as Lucinda going through all the different contracts with everyone. So, um, uh, yes, we so can put a time scale in there, but I wouldn't want do. to put one that's that's too soon and that allows us to Absolutely. kind of cause us to rush the work rather okay. than kind of do it diligently. So in that case, would it do us any harm? In fact, would it do our operators any harm if we just uh, put aside any time scale and not not have one in there. Would that be easier all round? So as um, soon as possible. Yeah, just say as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that happy works for that. me from an operational point of view. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's good compromise. Thank you. Except uh, I'm trying to find which recommendation to add it on to. Can we do that when we come to it, please? because we'll go through the recommendations. OK, at this point, I'm just going to see if Councillor McLaughlin wants to come in. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. I lost all of that conversation. It was That's uh, just as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're talking about dates of uh, when you want to get things done by, weren't you? Yes. I think, uh, I mean, uh, there is a, some sense of urgency, because if, if we look at the golf course, um, they have been invoiced for the first quarter, or their quarter four, which is January to March, and that invoice will need reissuing to recognise the credit we're giving them in due of from the 23rd of March and I don't want to delay that because we're at the same breath we're saying we want outstanding invoices paid uh, for the whole thing to be Can I say something sometime please Read. Am I right? Councillor McLaughlin? Okay. Councillor McLaughlin, could you try turning your video off? And see if that improves your connection. Dan, can you hear me? Uh, this is how I turn my video off. 
I, I can hear you. I, I can hear you. Do you want me to say anything or not? Yes. Doesn't seem to be responding. Any different? Any better? Steve, you're being asked to switch your video off so it doesn't take as much of your broadband. I know, I understand that. I'm clicking on the white button where the video is and it's not doing anything. It's not cancelling it. OK, do you want Dan to speak then? By all means. It's just to say, Chairman, that everybody is living in days which are not, well, certainly not in my lifetime have I ever come across this kind of thing, where deadlines are being missed at the moment for a whole raft of reasons. But it's, it's if we issue an invoice, because an invoice has to be issued by a certain date, with the expectation it's going to be paid on a certain date, it's a bit mucked up at the moment because if there's no income, coming to the people that are supposed to pay the invoice, they've got no means of paying the invoice. And as most of the things that we're dealing with here are almost cash payments, whether it's the golf course where people pay per round, or people going to the cafe and pay per bun, or whatever it is, there's no cash flow. And if they've got no cash flow, they can't pay. So all I'm suggesting is that if we're going to, if we're going to be able to accept the fact that all of us are in the same situation at the moment and that nobody is holding back for the purposes of, of, of doing a run at the end of the day. But in any case, even if they do, we, we've still got the assets. But, but the point that I'm trying to make is this. There's no point in us telling them they've got to be paid by July the 10th or 15th or whatever, because if they haven't got the been closed virtually all of them since March and that means they had nothing coming in through the gate so I, I'm just sitting here wondering why on earth we're discussing um, making uh, trying to make people stick to contracts which were written when days were normal and we were expecting people to work according to a, a, a timetable which was doable at the moment, we've got no idea how much longer we're going to be put into this position where we're talking uh, to each other in Morse code rather than in, 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 in proper, proper language because people keep getting cut off. So until we know where we're going, it seems to me reasonable that we can be slightly um, less, uh, if you like, uh, asking people to stick to contracts because I don't think they're doable. And, uh, you know, we're all going to fall out with each other if we're not careful. Okay, Chairman. Councillor McLaughlin. Or Vice Chairman. Was I talking to myself about all of that time then? I don't know what you're saying. No, I heard all that. Well, you might have well been. Comment. Uh, I think everybody could hear you, Councillor Daly. Okay, so in, in the interest of, of moving the meeting on, are there any other members who wish to speak? Or shall we move on to the recommended Councillor Cox? Yeah, I put, I put in the IM message, but I don't know if Steve is seeing them or not. I agree with what Dan says about people not having any income up to the point where they were shut down by COVID. But what does make me unhappy is that they, as Dad, Dan has, Dad, as Dan had said, um, we are expecting these businesses prior to COVID to have been getting money for every tea they sold, yes. every cup of tea they sold, and every coffee they sold. So therefore, they should pay their dues in the same way that they have been receiving the money and not yes. use COVID as a reason to not look in their bank and see what they had in the previous quarter. Yes. So as DAGT have paid up their dues, I would hope other people would, because if these are going to have a problem and our cash flow could be seriously affected. So I think we should be pushing, please, that people should pay everything that they owe and clear the books so that we can look at this in a very balanced way. If anybody can hear me, I agree with that. Um, me the, too. The invoice we're talking about in terms of the golf course is their Q4 invoice January to March, which is actually due in January. Um, 
So they all, uh, and all I'm suggesting is that to uh, get back to the timescales, we need to reissue that invoice minus the eight days when they were closed down. And, and, uh, and the condition of which we are applying in the recommendations um, is that all other outstanding rental invoices have to be paid uh, in order for them to benefit from the other concessions that we're proposing. Yeah. Can I just add there, though, Steve, I do not think we should re resend an invoice or a credit note. We should just simply send a letter, say, in the so, next quarter, um, in the next quarter, I, we will not I think not I'm going along with the recommendation, but they can only pay an invoice once it's been issued. Did everybody who can hear me in a normal time frame understand Same what I was saying? We do not reissue an invoice because solutions, they've uh, had invoices outstanding. The invoice should not be reissued. A reminder letter. Okay, you could wrap it up that way, whatever Yeah. Whatever the final people feel is worth. Um, okay, so if nobody else wants to speak Go on Martin. I think I think basically Steve was yeah. agreeing with what I've said. I don't think we should reissue an invoice, and I think we got to Paul, carry on. There, and we're all we're Paul all Holland? on the same time frame. Paul Holland like can he come is, in. He's not listening. He will. He's not that he's not listening, Steve. Yes, I'm here. Time yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Paul, please comment on whether we should reissue a credit note or we should just leave the invoice and tell them in a letter that we'll not charge it the next time. I think that's probably acceptable. Yeah, we can probably we can we can write off any small amount of outstanding debt that's that's um that's that's on the invoice. So yeah, I think that would probably be okay. What I can you hear me now? Yes, chair. What I, what I also wanted to say on the golf course is um is that the the proposal is that they get credit for fifty eight days. Okay, I'm back again. Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you, Councillor McLaughlin. Carry on. Okay. Um, the proposal is that um, they go back on full payment from, I think it's the um, after the, after 58 days. Um, it seemed a bit nitpicking to me, really, on, on two counts. One is um, they aren't fully open as of the 20th of May, uh, I think. They're only playing pairs. They now, uh, just now have started playing foursomes and there's no income coming from the clubhouse. So what I was wondering is that um, going forward, providing they settle their Q1 invoice, or sorry, their Q4 invoice up to March with due credit for eight days, the, uh, in negotiating forwards from April onwards, we need to take those things into account. Uh, and, and I'd ask um, uh, the leisure manager to, to bear that in mind um, in, uh, in going on beyond June. Anybody want to comment on that? Dan. Councillor Daly. Yeah, I, 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 I hear all the arguments and I agree with the sentiments. The only, the only problem with the golf course is the fact that in order to, to attract anybody to play on it, it's got to be in a playable condition, which means it's going to have expenses uh, to keep the golf um, course open uh, properly. So that I, I, it must be must be a great cost in doing that if it's going to be done properly, bearing in mind the quality of the course when it's in full, full use. So the numbers of people using it at the moment are not going to be covering the cost of maintenance, it seems to me. The one thing you don't want to do ever is to push a company to the point where it actually does go broke, because you don't get any money from somebody who goes broke. And um, I understand what you're saying about the first quarter or the, or the fourth quarter invoice. Yes, and should that, that probably should be paid. That's right. But in going forward from there on, let's bear in mind that the people who are trying then to resuscitate their businesses when they start to open have 
got to be in a condition to be able to offer a full and proper service for whatever, they, whatever they're charging. So I'm just saying this. Let's be practical about it, not too nitpicking. Thank you. Well, it's, it's, in, it's more or less precisely what I'm saying, Dan, is that um, going forward, um, we should uh, ensure that the um, rent that we're asking for reflects the fact that they aren't fully, uh, they won't be f fully operational and they certainly won't have any income from the clubhouse. That's all I'm saying. Um, and um, it's taken a care of in the in the recommendations anyway, I think, in, uh, um, in, in recommendation five. Um, where, it, where it says that, um, uh, um, sorry, I'm just reading it. Yeah, no, sorry, I mean, recommendation six, that the leisure manager continues to monitor the budget and cash flow positions and that future requests for supplier relief are brought to the committee for, future, for further consideration. So I think we're leaving that um, on the table. Uh, for further discussion, Dan. We're not trying to resolve that today. All we're trying to agree is where we are today and, and what we're agreeing on to in terms of relief that we're affording them today. Fine. Thank you very much. I agree. Okay. So um, if anybody else I'm looking at, I, I am getting my instant messengers, but the, the, there's not very many coming in. So if nobody else wants to speak on this, can we can we go to the recommendations? And um, and ask for a vote on them. Now, I, I gather um, the facilitator will help us with this. Will you, Ryan? Yes. Can I just make sure because obviously the revised recommendations were sent round. So has everybody seen the revised recommendations? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes. in moving to the vote then on those revised recommendations. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's Debbie here. Did, yeah. did Council Mrs Booch want to add the words as soon as possible onto the amended recommendation five? Thank you for reminding me, Debbie. Yes, please. Okay. And do we have a seconder? Yes, I'll second it. Thank but, you, Steve. Okay. So taking the vote then for against or abstain councillor cox four councillor daly four councillor mrs gooch four councillor mclaughlin four subject to that amendment you just referred to as correct. soon as possible correct yes okay thank you thank you clark could you could you Confirm the vote for us, please. Uh, I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah, that was uh, four in favour, so that's unanimous. Thank you. Excellent. Jolly good. Okay. Well, um, I think that brings us to the end of the meeting. Uh, and uh, may I declare the meeting closed? Sorry about the, um, the hiccups if they were coming from my end. That's, uh, I blame my ISP.